What's up guys? This week on Travel Dogs, we're gonna be talking to you about muzzle selection. It's really been a journey for us with our muzzle training process with Delilah. We've been very intentional about making it a positive experience for Delilah and really getting her comfortable with using it on a regular basis. And getting your dog comfortable with the muzzle starts with picking the right muzzle for your dog. We're going away to get your back, check the tag, decision is made, lock your door, need no more, it's a journey. This video is going to serve basically as our explanation of the process we went through in selecting the right muzzle for our dog. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be the right muzzle for your dog. However, a lot of the things that we did in this process of selecting and finding the right muzzle for Delilah could be very helpful in helping you find the correct muzzle for your dog. Now we know there's a big negative stigma around the use of muzzles. That is not what this video will be covering. We will be using it as a tool for helping your dog experience a normal life. And by and large, it has been a very positive aspect of Delilah's life since implementing it in her day to day. If you'd like to know more about why we chose to muzzle Delilah and a little bit of her history, you can click on the card just above. If you haven't already, be sure to leave a like for this video. Subscribe to our channel and ring the bell for notifications. Before we waste too much time, let's just get right into the video. Before we get into talking about muzzle selection and sizing, one thing I do wanna say is it's really important to get multiple sources of input. We did not just go to one site and say, okay, this is what we're gonna do now. We looked at Facebook groups, we looked at different websites, there's Muzzle Up Project, there's a bunch of different helpful sources out there and it's important to look into multiple options because you're gonna get different feedback from different people. Feel free to reach out to us and if we don't answer something in this video, we're more than happy to help you figure out the solution to your problem, as well as there's a whole community of people out here that have a lot of knowledge when it comes to muzzle training and sizing and selecting the muzzle for your dog. I think in a nutshell, what we're saying is we're not experts. We're people that have gone through the process with our specific dog, and we wanted to share some of the things that we learned in this process to help you out and maybe give you a jumping off point of things that you should be considering when selecting and sizing a muzzle for your dog. The first thing that you need to keep in mind when choosing to muzzle train your dog is the purpose for why they need this aspect implemented into their daily lives. Does this muzzle need to be bite proof? Does it need to be used situationally? Do they only need it when they're doing XYZ activity? For us specifically, Delilah is fear reactive. So we wanted it on a regular basis so that we could have the peace of mind that when she's outside, she and others are protected. Delilah is really well leash trained, but we had a common issue that people and children run up and pet her without asking. And we wanted something that no matter what the situation was, she and others would be safe when out and about, whether that was just a simple bathroom break or whether we were going on a hike. Some dogs have a pretty serious issue with eating everything they come in contact with when they go out into public. And it's a pretty useful tool when trying to curb that behavior. Bottom line, when people choose to muzzle train their dog, it's usually for safety purposes, whether or not it's for biting reasons and whether or not it's for eating purposes or just training purposes in general. A lot of people choose to muzzle train their dogs because you never know when your dog might end up in a situation where they need to be handled quickly, perhaps in a medical situation where they could be in a lot of pain and even if your dog is friendly, they might not be so friendly in that situation. It's really important to consider why you're muzzling your dog because it's really gonna help aid in the muzzle selection. Does it need to be wide and open for long periods of time? Does the dog need proper pant room? Does it need to be bite proof? Those are all things that you need to consider when selecting your muzzle. 
I want to go into a little more detail on pant room. This refers to the amount that a dog is able to pant when wearing the muzzle. Depending on what you're muzzling for, you need to be really considerate that if your dog needs to be muzzled for longer durations of time, say more than 10 minutes at a time, you need to make sure that they are capable and able to fully pant in their muzzle. So I'm holding a Baskerville muzzle. This is the first muzzle that we bought for Delilah and it allows her pretty much what I would say is like a half to three quarters pant. And this one right here is her Learberg muzzle and this allows for a full pant. It allows her to be completely active and open her mouth as wide as she needs when she's exerting herself to the fullest extent. And you can really illustrate the difference in size here because this muzzle legitimately fits inside of it. So it was a big difference when implementing it with Delilah. So you might be curious, why did we start with this one and not with this one? One would be, we were still learning. We knew that we wanted to start muzzle training her. However, we didn't really know a whole lot and Baskervilles are a great jumping off point. A quick side note here, be sure to take into account your specific dog and the specific situations in which you're muzzling them and consult a veterinarian before deciding to purchase a muzzle like this. Remember, it's always optimal for your dog's health and safety that they have a full pant space when wearing a muzzle. Our recommendation will always be to find a muzzle that allows for a full pant space. A lot of people start with these muzzles. A lot of people use these muzzles. It's one of the top rated muzzles. But there's two things I want to point out about it. One, there's not as many size selection options with these Baskervilles. So it's less likely that you're going to find the perfect fit for your dog with this type of muzzle. Two, it's not technically bite proof. While a lot of people think that Baskervilles are bite proof and a lot of their marketing tends to kind of create that idea without actually saying it, it's really important to note that it's not. There's really only a small selection of muzzles and muzzle brands that are actually considered bite proof. So this is where if your dog is a bite risk, you need to consider that when picking out a muzzle. That being said, if you're looking for something quick while you're doing the sizing process to start training your dog, Baskerville is still going to be a good jumping off point. It's a lot more affordable and it's great to start with. The Learberg specifically is a little more of a commitment. There's more involved in the sizing and adjustments to it and it is actually considered bite proof. It's got a metal cage on it but don't let that fool you because it does actually allow for more comfort when wearing it. It's a little less affordable than the Baskerville, but overall we've been extremely happy with it and use it in almost all situations now and would highly recommend it for your dog. We decided to go with the poly-coated metal because if we're in a cold area, we didn't want there to be exposed metal that could then stick to her skin and hurt her. So it's a very durable outdoor muzzle that she uses in all situations. Honestly, as far as bite proof muzzles go too, I would say that Learberg's on the more affordable end of the spectrum. It's not going to break the bank. However, it can be a little more difficult to find the proper size with this muzzle and you really want to try to get it on the first try. We're going to link a group that we used on Facebook down below. They were instrumental in picking and sizing the right muzzle for Delilah. I do believe that they charge a fee now with sizing, but I do think that they have some charts and stuff still available to get you started if you want to try to size it on your own and you're willing to um, take the time to purchase and send back if it's not the right fit. One misconception that I want to address is that a lot of people think that the basket muzzles are really heavy. We get comments all the time about it being a cage on her face and that couldn't be further from the truth. This thing is very lightweight and very comfortable and honestly probably even lighter than the Baskerville. <laughs> That was actually one of our concerns too when we first started looking at muzzles. I remember I was like, those cloth muzzles look a lot less crazy and they look a little bit more nice. I wasn't really thinking about the fact um, when we initially started looking that those cloth ones really are only used for very short durations like at the vet typically where you basically just need to quickly prevent a dog from doing anything like when you're trimming their nails or doing a quick shot or 
booty hole check or something. <laughs> booty hole check. Technical term. <laughs> yeah. When you're actually talking about muzzling your dog for a walk or a hike or when company's coming over, those muzzles really aren't comfortable because that's how a dog regulates their heat. They need to be able to pant. And if you're preventing them from doing that, they could overheat and they could not be breathing properly. So it's really important to get over um, the cosmetic aspects of muzzling and really focus on the actual comfortability aspects of muzzling. Yeah, just because something looks good does not necessarily mean that it feels good. Now, just because we had found the perfect muzzle for Delilah did not mean that it was just ready to go out of the box. There are still a lot of customizations that you might need to make to make your dog as comfortable as possible. The main adjustment we made was to the pad on the snout of the muzzle. It came a little too close to her eyes, and so we had to just kind of cut it back and smooth it out so that it fit comfortably on her face. The main point being you want to eliminate points of pressure where it can create extended wear on her skin. Another adjustment that we actually had to make with this muzzle is we had to look at the sides here and make sure that they were basically properly around her for safety and the muzzle actually doing its job, but also you don't want it to be pinching the side of their face either. There's really kind of a perfect window of where you want it to sit. And so I think the biggest point we're trying to make is that just because you get a muzzle that's really close doesn't mean it's not gonna possibly come with some adjustments. And that's where that group that I mentioned is also super helpful. They have a lot of tips and tricks to be able to, if you can provide them with videos and photos of the issue that you're seeing with your muzzle, they have a lot of solutions for how you can make it work for your dog. Take the time and do it right because you'll really start to see some tremendous benefits from doing so. Another thing that you're gonna have to consider is the security of the muzzle. So not just that it's fitting comfortably, but it's also doing its job. So basically we made these adjustments we, you know, kind of bent and shaped this. Be really careful if you're gonna do that and follow advice if you're gonna do that. You don't wanna break your muzzle and not be able to return it. Just a side tip. Um, but basically, you know, we got it to the point where we we're like, okay, cool, it fits around her, it looks comfortable, great. But Delilah has a really flat head and what do you know, it slides right off. And that's not really serving a great purpose if it's coming off that easily. We chose to go with the collar route. So basically we just got an extra collar that we put on her when she's wearing the muzzle. This goes around her, that's like on her face, that's on her, and a carabiner. And it just goes right on this strap of the muzzle and holds it on securely. Depending on your dog and their head, you might have to have two carabiners. Some people do chin straps, some people do head straps. There's a lot of different options of what you can do to make sure the muzzle is secure. And you know, some muzzles come pretty secure depending on your dog's head shape and size, and some just don't. And again, it's really important to take that level of comfortability into account so that your dog wants to wear this long-term. Before you embark on this journey, it's really important just to keep in mind that you don't wanna do this alone. At the very least, reach out to us, but there's a whole community out there that's ready and willing to help, and it's really gonna set you up for success to do this with the help of others. Don't just manhandle it and be out the cost of the muzzle. Take the time and do it right, and you'll be pleased with the results. To add on to that, other than just the practicality of getting information from people that have done this before or people who specialize in helping you select this, there's also a certain support that comes with, you know, it can be hard to start muzzle training. It's, you know, it's kind of intimidating the first time, the first few times, or not even the first few times, taking your dog out in their muzzle and getting dirty looks and judgment. Oh, is that the problem dog? What's wrong with that dog? You know, it, it can be a little bit uh, difficult emotionally as well. So. That's where a lot of these support groups really come into play as well. And take it as an opportunity to educate people. We've had a lot of meaningful conversations come out of the muzzle as a conversation starter and has really made an impact, I believe, on multiple people in educating them on the muzzle is not just for problem dogs, but there's all these other situations in which it will lend a benefit. 
you'd be surprised how many people don't realize that muzzles have such a wide variety of uses and they aren't this negative thing. The first step in making sure that your dog has a positive experience with their muzzle and muzzle training is making sure that they are wearing the right muzzle and it is fit correctly. The next step that you're gonna wanna take is implementing it in the right way with your specific dog. That's why next week we're gonna be doing a video going over muzzle training. So now you've selected and sized your muzzle properly, how are you gonna go about getting your dog to actually wear that muzzle? Make sure you tune in and follow up because you're really gonna to wanna to hear what the best practices are so that you set yourself up for success long-term with your dog's muzzle training process. We're gonna go over our journey as well as some other things that we read that maybe didn't fit our specific path with Delilah, but that might help you. Be sure to like this video, subscribe to our channel, ring the bell for notifications, and as always, thanks for traveling with us. Have a good week.